Leo. Super month we have here for you. This is your forecast for September 2016. And let me tell you that we got a lot going on with the moon this month. We have a uh, solar eclipse, we have a, a lunar eclipse, and then we have a second new moon. So the first new moon we have on the first, which is also a solar eclipse. And uh, for you, that will be showing up in your second house for money and income. So not only is that a new moon, but the eclipse, the solar eclipse here of this moon, is really sending you off on a supersonic highway where you can see new things coming into being and perhaps even starting off something that could indicate perhaps a new income cycle for you. Then we have the uh, lunar eclipse, which will be on the 16th, 24 degrees in uh, Pisces. This is taking place in your 8th house, which also rules money, not as much as your monthly income, it's more your savings. It's those things that you invest in, or money that you can have shared uh, with others, or your partner could be royalties and commissions. So that full moon is showing up here and it's passing by Neptune in the early hours before that lunar eclipse is full. And so what that can do, it can open up a channel of something not necessarily just unexpected but really can tie into something spiritual so I would say use those pre hours of that lunar eclipse to medicate meditate if you can just to see what intuitive information you can receive or visions that can uh, reveal itself for you it's a super spiritual full moon and it is an eclipse so that is exciting for you and then we have a second new moon this month on the 30th which is taking place here for you in your third house um, in Libra and it is then 8 degrees here in Libra and when we have our new moons that's when we plant our intentions in the third house it's all about communication so you can see we have new beginnings a lot this month financially within communications. We have the lunar eclipse up there in the 8th house. You might be able to finalize if you've been waiting, say for example, for a suit to pay out or say an investment or maybe even an inheritance to pay out. If it has been lingering, taking time, that lunar eclipse can actually finalize it. So there is an ending and then you should see some results uh, coming in between a day and a month. From it. So that is very exciting. But then we have more headline news too for September, and that is Jupiter. Jupiter has been cruising through your second house for money and income. Uh, most of you have seen how this area has opened up, expanded, giving you a lot of great opportunities too. But now it is moving into the sign of Libra. This is where it's going to be until late summer of 2017. And Jupiter in Libra, well, uh, it's your third house, so that rules communication. It rules short distance travel. But Jupiter itself loves not just travel, but long distance travel. So you can come to see that you might be out and about and travel a whole lot more from now, September of 2016, to late summer of 2017. It's just that itch, it's the urge to get out and about, maybe catch up with people, friends, family uh, that live at distance. Uh, and you can also see maybe they will come and visit you a little bit more often this month. For those of you Leos that love to write, this will be the year for you to express yourself in big, grandier ways. Why? Because Jupiter does everything on a big scale, not a small scale. And you could be really lucky to get in touch with the right publishers. Jupiter rules that. Uh, so, you know, it's not time for you to sit uh, to the side. You want to get in front of your monitor and hammer down if you have those inclinations. Now, having Saturn in your fifth house for creativity and self-expression kind of tells me that most of you 
Leos right now are very dedicated to something. It could be different for each of you individually, of course, but dedicated to something that you're feeling called towards. Okay, and it has to do with something you're bringing up from the depth inside core and up to the surface. Now this month, you have Mars here in this area too. And that's also going to want to shunt you forward as if you're having that speedy and extra propellant with you. As if time itself is accelerating, calling you to act and act now. Now Mars will go through this area and power it up once every two years. Right now, it's here. And some of you made that um, agreement, either to yourself, it could be a creative agent, whoever it is, maybe a publisher. Um, there in August on the 24th, when the two of them met up in a conjunction, that could have set you up for a plan that has longevity. Saturn is only in this area once every 29 years, and in two years from now, when Mars comes back to power up your creativity, Saturn won't be there. Saturn will have moved on. So at least another 29 years before you can get this super power that connects you to the source of your creative expansion. Those of you who have just started up your own business, this is a great time to see that these things can move forward. We just want to be a little careful and cautious. Why? Because Mercury is retrograde this month and has been since the end of August there, the 31st, uh, and it will be to September 23rd. So we want to be a little cautious signing any contracts, especially for you that has anything to do with your financial situation since Mercury is retrograding here in this area, okay? You can negotiate, you can research, but if you can, if you can step aside to, to October 1st, that's the best. At least wait to September, after September 23rd. So action, expansion. Jupiter, as it's leaving this sign here this month, which it will be, like I said, on the 20, no, on the 10th, sorry, uh, September 10th. Uh, when a planet leaves one house to go into another, Oftentimes, it leaves a present at your door, right? And since it's a Jupiter present, pay attention. Around the 10th, give or take a few days for it to come on your doorstep. And uh, lo and behold, I think it could be something quite beautiful, actually. And it can come in many shapes and forms, by all means. It could be a physical thing. It can be an emotional thing. So as we start off here, top of the month, uh, there's decisions to be made. You're looking at where you're at, what you have accomplished, uh, and where you want to go with this. And for some of you, I feel it could be a little bit in a gray zone, as if you're questioning yourself. And I always like to say, whenever in doubt, don't act. Wait. It's just waiting for more information to kick in so that you can get that feeling of confidence and conviction that's when you can act. I feel this little gray, gray zone that you're, you're questioning is, can I do this financially? Uh, can I put money towards my hobby? Or could I put money towards my business? Should I do it? Yes, no, or wait. On the second, you should be getting some insight, news, um, an epiphany that will give you uh, that, that conviction that you're looking for kicking you into action straight through the rest of that week, sixth and seventh, things coming together for you, um, insights, confirmations that are important, that, that can actually navigate you now, you'll feel that very, very strong. Um, this is a very transformative time for you as well, and that transformation is kicking you into new security. This is around the sixth and seventh. So, on the 10th and 11th, only a few days later, <laughs> right? just as you're up and running and saying, yes, this is what I want to do, then the universe may come around and ask you, it's like, are you sure? And you're like, what? You know, so when we get those kind of challenges, when the universe questions us, it's not to knock us down, right? It's to, for us to have a chance to really 
second guess or second question ourselves, am I truly convinced? It gives us a little time to look it over and shore up what we need to shore up. It's only a couple of days. And you know, you're so good to go. If you've done your work and your research, you'll look at that questioning period of those two days and you'll go, yeah, I'm sure. You know, no doubts. <laughs> all right? That's all that is all about. But it does have to do with money and money placements, where your money is going, can you afford what you're needing to do. Um, it looks like, yes, you can. Is the investment okay? Looks like it is. Because why? You're putting it towards something long term. You're not just going out to squander money. That's a big difference. So if that's what it's all about, then it's good the universe is second guessing you so that you can, you know, have a little wake up call there. But if it's placed towards something that can give you a response and an expansion down the road, you're all good to go. Around the 12th, I see, yes, there is some communication that might need to be, I won't say rehashed, but uh, I, I see there is a situation where you will be looking at something that needs to be adjusted. Again, this might come from your second house of money. Uh, meaning, again, uh, if somebody's presenting you a bill, don't take it at face value. You might need to look at it because why it's coming from that Mercury retrograde in your second house. So there could be something that's not right, something could be off, maybe a mishap, miscommunication, whatever it is. If you're getting any bids, uh, then perhaps you want to, uh, before you sign, again, Mercury retrograde, make sure that that bid is binding and to where you're liking it, what you can agree to. That's on the 12th. It's just a precaution just because Mercury is so involved here on this day. But as we move through the month, we have your dynamic uh, physical drive uh, kicking into action with a project that I feel could be quite exciting. And this has to do with you looking out towards mm, new horizons. There could be mm, something exciting spiritually, metaphysically, um, and I feel it could be online. It doesn't have to be you going back to school, even though quite a few of you might find yourself starting school, taking a class, and in that case, this is totally awesome because it's really tying into where you're heading down the road for your ambitions. Now, that might not come to show up, show up quite yet, but will probably four to five months from now uh, when Morris gets into your 10th house of career, so it's all good. It's you looking ahead and preparing where you want to be next year there in 2017. On the 19th and 20th, this is a time for romance. Um, I feel there could be some um, exploration in some ways where, where things come together for you just in a beautiful way and uh, you're expressing yourself here romantically in a, a deeper way. And why is that? Well, it is also because Venus now being in Scorpio allows your romantic, emotional self to really passionately get into the core of your emotions. Mars being present here in this area of love and romance as well, well, this too here is allowing you to uh, really ride the waves because Mars is really uh, on the move it's fiery, it wants to express, uh, and of course, uh, the more uh, power we can give to that Mars, the more Venus is also going to, to luck out on this. And they have a great aspect there on the 19th. Now on the 20th, um, there is a point of transformation uh, taking place. This is deep within your consciousness. It is also something coming from that depth, up and out, that you can communicate. So for you, this will be in the area, um, again, of your value systems, what's important to you. You're seeing it for what it is, your eyes wide open. And in that expression where you're communicating to whoever it may be, whether it's at work, you know, it could be to your supervisor, it can be to your partner. But this expression is this clarity of what you're seeing. And this is the beauty here, I feel, of... Um, 
Mercury's retrograde, it's been backtracking through your value systems for you to derive to a point where you could see the it factor, okay? Because when Mercury comes back to this degree, it's already passed it once, but it was direct and it was moving very quickly, so it may not have grasped it. But now going back to it and lingering there for a little bit, actually for quite a few days on the 20th, because the retrograde is starting to slow down, so Mercury is slowing down, then it's going to turn and it's going to take a little time for it to speed up. So you're probably, for a whole week, going to feel uh, the effect of this Mercury on uh, Pluto. So pay attention to where your mind is going. What is transforming for you uh, at this time? And once it picks up that gem, uh, you're going to have it with you for a whole year. Until next time, they have this very aspect from this area. So that's what we love about astrology. It is always opening doors for us, helping us to close those doors that need to be closed. So we have that lunar eclipse there on the 16th, closing uh, some doors or also uh, finalizing uh, something of major importance for you. And uh, then we have that solar eclipse on the 1st coming in. That is also a new moon in your finances. So that's supercharged opening up and moving you forward financially. And then the second new moon of the month, which will be there uh, August 31st. No, I'm sorry, um, September 30th. My mind. Um, uh, yes, September 30th in your third house for communication and travel. It could also be something that you're, you're now uh, choosing to do with some neighbors, siblings, uh, whatever that can be for you might be a whole lot of fun. It could be a community type project, get together, potluck, that kind of thing. This would be a perfect place uh, for this new moon to express itself. So listen, Leo, this is what we do have for September here and uh, always great to read for you and I'm looking forward for October's reading already.